So the first step is to uh, create a project, um, which is a templated uh, environment where you can uh, work with your federated uh, learning mm -hmm. model. So what you do here in Scala Studio is you can just go and create a new project. You can choose between different templates. So the FedN project is what is pre-configured for, for basic federated learning. Uh, so you would just give it a project name you just uh, and then create project. That will deploy all the resources um, that is needed for, for, the, for the work. And that could be include, for example, uh, some databases, some uh, storage volumes, etc., etc. Now this takes three to five minutes. So I have already prepared a project. We're going to look at this credit card fraud detection project today. So I can just open that. Uh, and what you see there is like an overview of the resources that you have deployed in your project. Uh, so currently you can see we have some storage uh, pre-configured. Uh, we have some databases. We have a Docker registry. All this is needed for, um, for the work. Um, we have also used this uh, tenant before for demoing purposes. So we have a couple of versions of, of this model deployed already. We'll come back to that later. Uh, and we also have some serving components up. But that will be late. So what we do um, uh, as a first step to initialize a project for federated learning is we need to create uh, some components of the FedN system. So I can go ahead and create a reducer, uh, which is the uh, sort of main controlling entity. Uh, it runs the discovery services and it sort of operates or, or interacts with what we call the combiner network, which I will tell you about next. So we can just use the default uh, settings here. Uh, we also need at least one, and it will be sufficient with one for now, combiner, which are, these are the server components that talk to clients and are responsible for aggregating a certain number of models from a certain number of clients. Um, so that's how it works. So we saw this model in, in before. So combiner, um, it will be, connected to this reducer and yeah we can all go with the default settings um, so while this is deploying we can go ahead and look at the reducer uh, it's not available yet there we go there we go uh, so the reducer is up and now it's ready to be configured um, for uh, with a model that is supposed to be trained so in this stage we're going to configure the reducer with all the code and all the initial models that are needed for um, running and training a federated model. Uh, before we do that, we're going to go and take a look at what it is that these components are. So to do that, we're going to take a look in a Jupyter environment, and that's an environment that is uh, widely used and familiar to most of the people. So Studio comes with a few different uh, standard uh, tool chains then for interacting with code and for uh, interactive computing. So we have Jupyter, we have some RStudio and so forth. Uh, we also have uh, more general uh, editors as well for or environments for code development. Uh, but let's take a look and we're going to create a Jupyter lab environment. So we call it lab. So it's called lab. Uh, we are going to attach the project volume and the menu volume. Mount that. And then this takes like a minute or so for, for it to deploy. There we go. Yes, so a project in, um, in FedN or in the uh, FedN environment um, is fairly sort of simple. You sort of, you, as we mentioned, the, uh, the system is model agnostic. So the idea is that you should be able to start from, from the model that you already have and then adapt it to run in a federated setting. There are a few things, or there are mainly two things uh, that we clearly need in order to run this in a distributed or even decentralized context. And one of it is the code that is to be executed on the client. So this is code that is invoked when a client trains and updates a model uh, and when a client validates a model. So what we do there is that we develop essentially a few templated files, in this case in Python, that um, is able to essentially define what is one step or what is one uh, local training update. Uh, so we don't have time to dwell into the details here, um, but you can go and look at the public examples if you want to look 
close more closely. Uh, so once we have done this, and this is a fairly simple project or process, uh, we can package this, or we package this in a in a client folder as a tarball file. Uh, and this is what is then uploaded to the uh, reducer. The other thing we need, except for the code package, and we call this the compute package uh, in a lot of our terminology, uh, is the other thing we need is a seed model. Uh, so we need an initial version of the model from which uh, all the clients are going to start the training. And this can be a, a blank, untrained model. Uh, it can also be a, um, a pre-trained model. So this is, this is very much up to the project or the, or the data scientist that is preparing the project for federated training. Uh, so what we have done here is we have uh, defined the, and this is an empty and untrained model. Uh, it's just generated by, by the TensorFlow um, as a untrained uh, model graph, and then it is saved in this case in a NumPy format. So these components, they will go uh, into the reducer. Uh, so we're going to go and configure it here. So I'm going to upload uh, the uh, compute package. You see, this is just a tar, tar zipped, tar ball archive of the, of the code that I showed you. So we're going to upload that, and then we're going to upload the seed model. And then the Fed then system is ready for training. Um, so we see here we have something we call the model trail. It has a, a single initial version. This is our untra untrained model. Uh, and we have a couple of, of new menu options. So the next step uh, is to connect uh, clients to this network. So we're going to go and look and see what the network looks like at this stage. Um, so right now you will see here that you have like a reducer deployed, you have a combiner, but no clients attached. Uh, so the clients are the workers. They are going to receive the code that we uploaded to the reducer, the code package, uh, when they connect. So they're going to ask the reducer to be assigned to a combiner. Uh, they'll get assigned and they, they will receive the code that is needed to be executed for training. Uh, so to do that, we need to download a client configuration file. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open that. Uh, I will take this content um, and I will then in a terminal. So now I'm actually, so these terminals, they are working then on my local laptop, whereas the reducer here is deployed in Amazon on the combiner. Uh, so the, what I'm going to do here is sort of represents uh, connecting a local client. I'm going to do that. I'm going to open uh, a configuration file locally, replace that old content with this reducer. Um, and then I'm going to execute a command to connect. And this is a bit compl complex, of course. It's really not that complicated. We're just using Docker here. Uh, and you can do this in different ways. Of course, you can run uh, a native client. And you can you can deploy with Docker. We're choosing to do the Docker version here. Or I can actually show you that I have the data locally. That is my partition of the data. So I have it here in a folder data. Uh, I have different versions of this. And then for this is a demo project. So this uh, project comes then with uh, 10 different partitions of, of the data set. Uh, so what I'm doing in this client is I'm going to attach the data set called zero. And you see it's just CSV files with the training and test data that I have on my, my local device. So I will connect uh, the first client uh, pointing out data in partition zero. back here, and then I will go ahead and connect. And see now it's connected. Uh, we're going to see, yeah, we see it appearing here in the uh, FedN system. So now it's been assigned and it received the compute package. Uh, so we'll go ahead and I will connect another client, uh, this one serving uh, data in partition one. And I can keep going like that. And in a real situation, of course, then you would have clients connecting from different data center, different locations. Um, in different countries, um, but that process is identical to what I just showed you here. Uh, so now we have a system configured with the compute package, the seed model, and we have uh, two clients available and ready for training. So now we're actually ready to start training this model, uh, Federated, and to do that we go to the control menu in FedM, 
So here you see the uh, current configuration of the system. You see what is the seed model. You see what is the latest global model. We haven't trained yet, so they are the same. We, we see all the configurations we have. And this from this sort of view, uh, I can control the number of global rounds I want to run, and um, so forth. I can set parameters such as a round timeout and so forth. Uh, but we're just going to run five rounds now um, to, um, to show you how it works. So I'm going to start kick off the federated training. And now you can see sort of the events occurring in this distributed system. So this is a little bit of an expert view, uh, but I will so soon show you something else as well. So you see the work uh, proceeding uh, as planned. You see the workers are training and validating models. So this model uh, is trains very quickly. It's, a, it's a well designed for demos like this. In reality, uh, training can be much slower on the client or it can be much faster, which come with different challenges. But this view is really sort of, you see uh, what's happening in the system, uh, the audit trail, uh, but what we will usually work with is here in the dashboard where we can see uh, uh, the training progress uh, with the metrics that we have defined. So in this case, the data scientist has provided a few options when configuring the compute package. We can look at the training and test loss and accuracy. Here, this is up to the data scientist to implement all the metrics that you want to compute on the fly. Uh, so in this box plot, for example, you see, I think we should have the last point as well. Yeah, so all five rounds are ready. So we, let's look at the accuracy. So where you see the box plot here is that we have two clients. So we see the, uh, uh, the validation score on both of these clients. If you have more clients, you will see a more, yeah, a a more elaborate box plot, of course. Um, so the blue, uh, the magenta curve here is the mean uh, accuracy across the two clients. So they are all validating locally in this setup. Obviously, you might also want to have, if you have a situation where you have a pool or shared validation set, you could also score the global model against that one. Uh, we have a table view as well. You can see the, the data in detail there. Uh, and you can see some um, performance statistics that is being gathered by the system. So this is the uh, uh, client training time and profile. So what you can see here is that the blue part here is the time the client spend on average training the model, updating it. Whereas the green and the orange curve here are sort of communication overhead from the model being trained in a federated context. So now we have trained the model uh, five rounds. Um, I think we should go and look and try to interact with this model trail, which I show you here. So here you can see sort of the models that are being committed. So at the end of each global round, you have a new model committed uh, and this trail is really mutable. Uh, it's not supposed to be changed. Um, so we can go and use the API. We're back in our Jupyter environment uh, and we're going to look at the uh, a notebook here. Uh, so obviously FedM and uh, Studio comes with an API. Uh, so in this case, we can use that to load the model into our notebook environment and uh, try to use it. Uh, also create, uh, create a model object. So let's do that. What we're going to do here is we're going to need to go and obtain the model ID from the um, latest global model. And I think the easiest way is to get it from here. So latest global, this one going to go and do that. So here I can of course select the latest or the best or the worst. I can try to evaluate the model version that I like. Uh, you remember I also mounted the menu volume. So here is the volume where Fed then is committing or storing all the, the raw data for the models. So I'm do that and I have created the model uh, back. And what I've done here is essentially I have taken the model from the Fed and format I have created it back into um, the uh, native KRS TensorFlow format that I was using. Where I will also do, I have also done this a couple of times already, uh, but I will create a new model version, version 6 here, uh, and I will push and I will create this into Studio as a model object that is being deployed. All right, so go, let's go and look at the objects that we have, and we will see here that. Uh, we have this new version of the model being created in the environment. So this is version 6 that we just deployed. Uh, we can look at it a little bit. Uh, you can download, you can interact with the model if you're authorized, of course. 
Uh, you can also sort of specify where we can do that later, sort of model cards with metadata with the model. But what we will do next now is we will deploy this model in production. Here uh, we will leverage the fact that there are many different uh, open source tools for what we call model serving. Uh, so we already have one version of this deployed and an old version. Uh, I will actually go ahead and remove that one. Uh, and then we will deploy, and we know this is a TensorFlow model, so we're going to use the TensorFlow serving modules here. It's fraud v6. Uh, we're going to select this version of the model object, specifies in that we can use the default environment, and then we're just going to go ahead and deploy this. Reserve this. And what is this is going to do is going to create the REST endpoints and the RPC endpoints all according to uh, the functionality of TensorFlow Serving. Okay, now, so now we can just check it's available. Yep, the, uh, the endpoint is up. So we go ahead and copy this URL here. Um, and now we can go back into our Jupyter environment and we can actually try to use this model. So we have an output here called predict which essentially now we're going to read some of the test data that we have. So we read in that and we just create, we just take two of the of the lines of this data. So we're going to, to predict on two points. Uh, let's define this as version six. And then I update the URL with my latest deployment. Uh, what I will need to do, of course, is I will need to obtain authorization tokens. So I'm an authorized user of the studio system. I'm a member of this alliance and I'm allowed to use the model. So this is what I do here. And then I actually make a request, a REST uh, request to this endpoint and get the result back. So this is now in result and then I can actually then just make the prediction. So I have in this case, both of these points were predicted to not be uh, fraudulent cases. So that's it. So what we have seen here is that we have sort of gone through the, all the phases from uh, starting a project in studio, deploying the resources needed for federated learning project. Uh, we configured uh, the FedEnd system with the compute package on the seed model. Uh, we trained a couple of rounds, five rounds in this case. And obviously, I mean, we, we're going to have to keep training and in particularly we're going to have to um, add more clients with more more and more data in order to improve the model. Uh, but it's with this we can go iteratively about or, or do as we see fit. Uh, we also saw that we can easily use the API then interact with these global models, the trail of global models to uh, create uh, model objects that we can download and share uh, and that we can deploy with uh, standard tools for standard open tools for uh, model serving in order to use them from uh, different so software software artifacts. In this case, we, we use them for SAP and we use the REST API endpoints deployed by TensorFlow Serving to query the model for results.